Hello, I'm Eric with Energy Pro Windows and Siding, and today I'm standing here with Brandon Jones at Jones Home. He's a general contractor here in Johnson County and the owner of Jones Home. And Energy Pro is going to showcase him, and we're here today to discuss um, what he does as far as insulating and making a highly comfortable and energy efficient home. And this is Brandon, and we're going to talk today about uh, air infiltration, thermal barriers, um, heating and cooling systems and all the products and the building processes that it takes and the things that Brandon does to go above and beyond that to make a, a really tight, air, uh, energy efficient, comfortable home for you. So I'd like to start outside um, and I'm going to have Brandon explain to us what he does when he's framing uh, his homes to uh, start that whole process of energy efficiency. So if you want to talk to us about what you do uh, when it comes from the foundation and we'll start and kind of go up. I'd like to hear about the zip wall process and, and the benefits of doing zip wall compared to traditional building. Um, but I'm going to kind of turn it over to you and, and explain some of the cool things you're doing out here. Sure. Uh, so our kind of our go-to on the outside is going to be the Huber Zip system. Uh, we like it one because the product is it solves for air and water all in one step. It's all one warranty, it's all one manufacturer. So it's not a lot of uh, builders, not that it's wrong, but it would be OSV, OSB sorry, with maybe Tyvek and some other products on top. So then you've got different manufacturers, different warranties, different, you know, who's who, if there ever is, knock on wood, we have an issue. Um, when we apply all of our plates, uh, our air infiltration starts, or getting rid of air infiltration starts at the framing process. Okay. So when we sit on top of the concrete, you're gonna run your typical, we'll say your two by six mud sill there at the bottom. We're running a bead of acoustical sealant, to be simple, along the top of the concrete, around all the bolts. We're gonna run a conventional sill sealer on top of that. And then we run another bead of what we use as Big Stretch. Uh, it's from a product from Sashco. Um, great company to work for and they you know, always have technical help if we need it. So, and then once we get from there, when we apply our zip, another bead is applied at the outside edge. So we're not getting air basically. So we've eliminated the air process going in uh -huh. between the concrete and the plate, but we've also eliminated it going up this way, which if you've ever been inside your home and take like an outlet cover off or something, you can feel that water, that air coming in. Right. That's air coming up this way. Or if you've ever seen that ugly black line around your carpet, that's air coming in from the outside, right? It's important to keep that air out of the house for energy efficiency. But what exactly does that do for the average homeowner? You know, the air infiltration that we're talking about today. So on the air infiltration, I mean, like you said earlier, we're selling comfortable, right? So, but the efficiency and the other things that come from it, a lot of that's just byproducts, right? Right. Um, so this home, where we're at here in Gardner, Kansas, for these homes, we have to get a HERS rating done. And this home on paper, it's going to be almost $1,900 less per year in energy cost versus the home next door on an average scale, right? If someone was not building the same house. So if we we're building this traditionally, we would start off with your foundation sealing for air infiltration and then using what OSB to get uh, to structurally tie the house together, that rack value. And then we would have to put our air or vapor barrier on top of it. But what you're telling me is this product is rated for both all of that, all of the above. Yeah, it's a one process. It's a one process. I don't have to apply the OSB and then the Tyvek. Um, Tyvek will solve for, and I use Tyvek because that's pretty common, right? But there's many, many different brands. That'll solve for your bulk water, but it does not solve for air. Done well, there's a lot of guys that will use a typical house wrap like that over studs or something like that can do extremely well, but the amount of detail that goes into it to accomplish that is pretty difficult. Okay. And so then from here we go on, I noticed that you actually use the zip wall product <laughs> here in the garage between yeah. the garage space and the living space. Right. So we've got a lot, we have to make holes or we have to provide plugs in front of every bay per code. So we've got minimum three holes here, assuming that we don't have a homeowner that's added other things or otherwise. What's stored in your garage? All the stuff, you, you know, your gas, yeah, your, your cars, lawnmower, your gas, car absolutely. comes home hot. All those things, we want to keep all of that out of inside as well. So for, you know, these are four by 10 sheets. Let's say it for a cost of $55 a sheet and two rolls of tape and a couple hours labor, we can apply this. We apply our sheet rock just right over it, but we've, same big stretch here. We've sealed at the bottom, we've sealed at our plate. We've applied a flashing tape here at the top over our sill place before we installed our roof truss system. So all of our air that we want 
out is out. Everything we want in is in. We're just controlling that environment. So on the inside of the house, Brandon, when it comes to air infiltration, I know that we've used the zip wall system and we've caulked and sealed everything. Does that continue up into the roof rafters here as far as air infiltration? Yeah. So kind of what we've done, so we've eliminated, like we talked outside, coming up from underneath. Mm -hmm. At the top, we applied that flashing tape up and over the top. So in this case, our assembly is a vented attic. So we're going to have insulation up there. We've got baffles which are going to allow airflow up, out our roof vents, etc. Some of our homes that we build a conditioned attic all together and we just continue that barrier all the way outside and there's no air in, no air out, and we control 100% of it. We've ideally got all of the air taken care of before we get to sheetrock, before we get to anything else. We're not relying on just a beta caulking or the less levels of having to have fine detail per person or trade to perform the better scenario for us. So we're, we've taken Keep that air barrier from the foundation. We've gone all the way, all the way up, excuse me, <coughs> all the way up to the roof rafters. Yeah. And now what we've done is what we're looking at is we've got a thermal barrier. The thermal barrier is on the inside of the house where the air barrier is on the outside of the house. So tell me a little bit about this insulation because this is something you don't normally see in new construction. Normally you'd see um, fiberglass, like the pink fiberglass insulation. But what is exactly is this product and why do you use it? Yep, so like you said, in the fiberglass, depending on what color it is, that's just gonna be manufacturer specific. Uh, this is a rock wool product that we use. Uh, so there's quite a few benefits of it. One, the biggest thing is in this bay here, and in a fiberglass bat, I'm gonna get an R13 value, okay? Okay. Uh, and then you also have those nasty flaps that you have to on the vapor retarder that you have to overlap right. and detail uh -huh. and do that correctly. Anyways. Rock wool, I'm getting an R15 right out the bed. Same thickness, but I'm getting an R15. Okay, so okay. which is increasing our uh, R value. Correct, our R so value the R value better. here, okay. um, we're making the best of the small wall, the thinner wall assembly as we can, this right? this is two by four construction? Two by four okay. construction okay. here. Um, and then also, when we, if we were to be in a two by six here, we would get a 23 value versus a 19 in a fiberglass bat in that wall. Uh, fire, it will not burn. Oh, this is fire has fire retardant already built in. Well, it's made of rocks. Rocks don't burn. Awesome. So it's made it's made the biggest um, ingredient, so to speak, is basalt. So it's kind of made off of byproducts, and then it's held together with some other various. I'm not, you know, the chemist, and that's above well, my pay chemist, grade. Uh -huh. And okay. I'd probably get it wrong if I tried to describe it. But our guys at Rockwell, um, Dan, Dan Edelman, and then Chris uh, out of Minnesota. He actually came down before he did the install just to make sure there weren't any questions from Minnesota to make sure that we're good. And we also like them because if we have, let's say we have a little bit trickier assembly, or we're trying to achieve something else. They have an entire team that will do that at no cost and run the assembly and run our risk rating, we'll call it, and make sure that we're all good to go there so we're not creating an issue for us, for the homeowner, you know, things like that. Well, I noticed too here, Brandon, that uh, normally you wouldn't see a header over a door with a thermal break. Uh, would a thermal, well, can you explain thermal break and why you framed out the header like this with the, your insulation above it? Yeah, so normally you would see in a two by four wall, you know, you would see two pieces of two by 10 put together, maybe a piece of OSB on Same one side or other, it, yeah. or in between to make that full three and a half. Well, we've eliminated, we want a little bit of thermal break there, right? Our cold it outside, not transferring to the inside. Yeah. Right, so we've got it here at the studs, believe it or not, you know, on the outside. The cold stud on the other side is gonna be a little bit on the inside. Once we get this sheet rocked and get heat on, it'd be awesome to have you guys come back. We can take our thermal camera and we can show you like where the points are a little bit, right? Right. But in these, so we've simplified it. We've just taken LVL headers. So we've made a single ply header. Okay. It's all pushed to the outside and that allows us, we can take a rock wool bat, break it in half, and we can get about probably an R7, R8 value at that LVL, so we've got it continuous throughout versus having that solid wood to the interior. And I see also over here that you've done that above your windows. Yep. And look, I see these uh, nice sunrise windows <laughs> that you purchased from Energy Pro. You might know where I got those, I that's do, right. I do, I do, and um, I'll take a minute here to just kind of tell you what uh, makes these highly energy efficient, and when we're talking about air infiltration and thermal breaks, so this is a sunrise vinyl window. Um, with has some great numbers here on the uh, 
the sticker as far as air infiltration this particular window here the air infiltration rating is 0 0.02 which is one of the best in the industry your thermal breaker your r value is this frame is reconstructed structurally and it's actually filled with polyfoam uh, insulation and you actually get an r value out of the frame and some of the, some of the sash rails or the sash frame on these and you're, again that's going to be about an r7 and uh beautiful job installing them they look fantastic yeah, so in a little bit, we do a little bit different on the windows as well. Uh, in this circumstance, I lean towards a single home typically. This is a ranch home, so you can clean the outside windows easy, right. in or out, right? Uh, double hung, if we were a two-story, we'd probably go that route, which is not a terrible amount of money difference. But I believe you said in this window, even if I had a double hung, my air infiltration, everything's the same. It's the same. Right. Yeah, it is the Which same. is not normal. No. So normally we lean, lean towards a single hung or like a picture window, something if it's not needing to be functional um, for just those reasons for the air. Uh, on the install, normally you would see that foam, you know, that goes all the way out to that flange. This is a new construction, so it's got a nail fin outside. We've sloped all of our sills. So even when we frame it, this has a five degree slope. We run that same Huber system, all one warranty, all one, you know, company, down and around. And then we run our zip to the windows and we run our zip tape around the edges. So where this bead of big stretch is here actually meets the tape. There's no wood exposed inside this jam at all to any water. It's not, if it will leak, it's when. At some point, right. there's gonna be a homeowner, it's gonna Absolutely. have it 15 years from now that's gonna need paint or it should have had <laughs> paint five years ago, right? So we flashed our trim on the top on the outside. We flashed our window at the top. We've actually ran a thicker channel on our trim, or I mean on our uh, flashing. So the water runs off and out versus down and just across the face of the window. And then we run a bead of backer rod for our insulation in here in about a quarter. And then this is filled with that big stretch for the remainder. So if water ever did get in for whatever reason, it hits the top of the window, rolls off, goes out, runs out our slope sill. Everything always goes to the outside. outside the it doesn't come Perfect. inside like a flat sill. It's got a pick, it's got a 50-50 chance Excellent. going anyway. So when we talk about insulation and air, fil air filtration, I know you haven't done it yet because the inside the house is under construction. So we're gonna add sheetrock next. Uh -huh. And then I was really impressed. Uh, tell us a little bit about your attic insulation and what you're doing for your thermal barrier up in the attic. Okay, so we will sheetrock. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually went through the other day trusses I like trusses, right? Mm -hmm. We can make any span. Technically, someone could come in here and take any wall out 10 years from now and remodel this place. As long as they don't change an outside wall, we're good, right? Yeah, that's it. Um, we took a laser, set it up, our big thing with trusses, and I'm kind of off your point here real quick, but as we just check to make sure the our tolerance is good. Across this entire room, I had an eighth inch is all I had. So the trust company did a great job for us here on this one. And where I'm getting there was we would either have a five eight if we had to get rid of a little waviness or do a little extra work or half inch. In this circumstance, we're just going to go with half inch. Half inch sheet rock, okay. And then on top of this, we're going to go with an R49 blown insulation on the interior. Oh, wow. So you could have the choice of either a cellulose or a fiberglass. What are your competitors doing as far as attic is lately? Because an R49, that's great. Yeah, uh, it's going to depend on, that's going to be municipality specific probably. Okay. Because some municipalities follow the energy code, some don't. And as you know, they can adopt or take, take as many parts out as they want, or, you know, they can kind of cater it to the municipality itself. So for us, I just know that we're meeting or exceeding code with a 49 by quite a bit. And we're actually gonna go all the way out over the garage. It's not a requirement to insulate the garage. Or if we're unconditioned inside and out or both sides, we don't have to insulate that. But we've done a full insulation on the garage. Uh, nice. And then we will have an R49 over the top of the garage as well. So it'll be continuous throughout the entire thing. That's home. nice. And you were telling me earlier, so as far as air infiltration, even after, even before you blow in insulation, you're gonna seal all your can lights and all everything, every hole in the ceiling gets right. cocked and sealed for air infiltration? So this is for lack of a better term, we're gonna call it a production home. We're in a subdivision, the home is not sold yet. Uh -huh. We're building it. Well, we're gonna put it for sale here in the next, you know, let's call it a couple of weeks, month, whatever. Um, hopeful, very hopeful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll be there, we'll put it for sale. We'll get it out and, uh, you know, see what the market does. Right. So, but the, we're gonna use our drywall basically as our air barrier. Mm -hmm. um, if it were a custom build or something like that, sometimes we may run zip in here on our ceiling too. Oh, wow. And we're done. 
uh, or we have done to where above those rafters or our trusses, if let's say we'd maybe go with a 10 foot plate height, we zip all of that and then we drop our regular ceiling down a foot and then so we're, con you know, our conditioning, we're not losing anything up. But in here, once we apply our drywall, which is gonna be our air barrier in here for a cost effective approach, then we'll run around all of our cans, all of our boxes, any holes, things like that will get sealed. And then before we'll have one or two of our guys here while their sheet rockers are here, they're gonna hang all of our lids for us first and we're going to eliminate any of that airflow out of our soffits uh -huh. coming down behind this wall. We spent a lot of time keeping it out there now. Right. We're going to run a bead of acoustical sealant all the way around every room perimeter before oh, wow. they hang the wall. So I can't get any air out of my soffit and then back behind the sheetrock, which is just going to come in and leak on this side. All right, so now that we've talked about our insulation and our zip walls and our, our thermal break and our air break, now we're gonna talk a little bit about what Brandon's done for the heating and cooling down here in the high energy efficient uh, furnace. So if you wanna tell us what you've done here. Sure, so we started before, down here, we started before we put the slab in, right? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you started before you put the slab in? Yeah. So what exactly did you do there? So underneath this floor is an 8.8, .8. We get about, it's an EPS foam. We get about a 4.4 per inch. So there's two inches underneath here. A foam? A foam, EPS foam. Oh, wow. Below the slab. So ideally, when you're walking through here barefooted, this floor's not cold. Concrete is very, well, I guess it's very good at conducting. It, yeah. It's horrible with our values, it's, right? It's horrible thermal break. Thermal, it's gonna, yes. It's gonna bring the cold ground air up or the warm ground air Correct. up. Correct. So we're, and in Gardner, we have to have, well, with any concrete, you're gonna have a poly barrier, right? Whether mm -hmm. that's a stego wrap or whichever to meet your mill requirement per code per, per the jurisdiction. So, but in this case, <clears throat> so we have solid plastic underneath, along the edge of the entire basement, it's all taped solid, all of our pipe penetrations, anything that comes through the floor was all taped solid. So only all the air, we do have radon in place here. We have to have a passive system as part of this build. Everything stays down or only goes out the pipe. It's not leaking through holes, leaking through cracks, things like that. So uh, to get back to your point on the HVAC here, uh, this is a natural gas high efficiency furnace here. So everything goes out the side. For maintenance for us and for our homeowners down the road, we try to minimize the penetrations through the roof. We end up having to have three here because we had to run radon out. We had to run a couple vent stacks out, but in a typical furnace, you know, we'd be running flue pipes. We'd be running all sorts of stuff out that roof, poking a ton of holes. We eliminate that, we go out the side with it. Um, so we've got a 90, I believe, and I'm drawing a blank, but 96% plus efficient okay, furnace yeah. here. That sounds, yeah. We will have whole house humidification as part of the home. It'll run a lot of, you see it a lot, a lot of homes, a lot of new construction homes, you see that. But also with this home, for our shoulder seasons here in Kansas City where it's 70 and comfortable outside, we're still in shorts, the AC's not quite running, right? Everybody right. normally will depend on that air conditioner to dehumidify the home. Right. So we're gonna have whole house dehumidification dedicated here, It'll be another humidistat next to the thermostat upstairs. So if you say you want it to be 50%, 40%, whatever's comfortable for you, this house is gonna get there because the air conditioner's not running because it's only 70 outside. It's okay. not, there's no heat load and there's no cooling load currently because the temperature's great, right? Right. Um, assuming that you don't have all the windows open. <laughs> yeah. And then this home too, if we get, we're gonna do a blower door test here in a couple weeks as soon as we get the sheetrock in. And and what's, tell me about a blower test real quick for the average homeowner who doesn't know what a blower test is. So normally when we build, we can go off what's called prescriptive, right? On paper, we talked about the HERS rating earlier right. that says this house is about 18, 1900 bucks less than the house next door, typically. So on paper, we show a number. This blower door is gonna help us verify that all this stuff that we did that our attention to detail is there. So code says, depending on where you live, municipality again, or uh, climate basically, you're gonna have a certain amount of air exchanges per hour. How leaky is the home? This home ideally is going to be considerably below that number. So we're gonna- All the things we've talked about before and all the things you're doing. Correct. Because above and beyond, okay. Correct. So once we get through all of those items, we wanna verify that we did a good job. You and I standing here, when the heat's on, we're not gonna know. We're never gonna live here long enough. We're never gonna sit right. on the couch. Well, maybe we will, I don't know Makes if we're gonna buy it. 
but we want to verify that we've done a good job now because if we need to fix something, let's do it now versus when all the trim's in, the furniture's here and everything, it's too late, right? right. So let's figure it out. Um, so once we figure out how leaky the home is, by all of the projections and the science, we'll call it, the building science mm -hmm. that's went into it to this point, tells us we're gonna be pretty far below the building code minimum. And once we get below that, or the maximum, we should say, once we get below that, we need to start introducing air to okay. the home. Uh, a lot of people are pretty familiar with, like they wanna put that great big range hood in the house, right? Right. You turn that on, well, we're sucking too much air out, we gotta bring air in. Because we're so airtight, the, the, the building envelope is so tight. Right. Okay. Um, awesome. Well, when we're like on a hood, it's just because you get 1,000, 1,200 CFM, it's just sucking air out faster than right. the house is leaking. Leaking. Correct, yes. Um, we're going to have an ERV that will, on a cycle as we program, we'll get it all tuned, but on an hourly basis or however we dictate that it works, it's gonna bring fresh air in and exhaust some of that stale air out. Let's say you have somebody that is gone three months of the year, lives in Florida, that system's gonna take care of that. If you lock this house up for that long, okay. you know, or you get someone that doesn't open windows, open doors, lots of allergies, kids that are whichever, we're helping eliminate a lot of those things, comfort, health, durability, all those things that we're delivering. Are those becoming more and more normal now that we're making our houses so tight, so airtight? Do we, I mean, is that something that you feel is gonna become mandatory or is that just a system that you're putting in to help um, with the fact that you're building such an airtight home? I think it will get there. Uh, as you know, our construction industry is very slow to change. It's a lot, it, it's a lot of, this is how we've always done it, so let's always do it that way, right? Um, I think it will get there, but it's definitely not there yet. Like I talked about the prescriptive path, on paper this house says it's this. So in this municipality, a blower door is not a requirement. Okay. So as long as the paper says I'm doing what I should do, then I'm good as far as from a municipality and, and a satisfying that standpoint. Gotcha. Um, the blower door is just us wanting to know and in this circumstance, the first time I built this floor plan, I drew this plan and we designed it, went through it, but I wanna see how, what we can, if there's things we need to change on the next one too, that can make our process better and maybe somehow reduce costs through learning, you know, from being in a subdivision, we'd like to do that. Well, I say, I don't know how you can make the process better. I'm looking at another one of those sunrise <laughs> uh, windows that were, you know, you purchased from Energy Pro. And I will take the time to say that how impressive uh, you are as a builder and just we have to pan this basement for a minute because most, most of the time in new construction, your builders will put the HVAC and all the utilities in the center of usable living space. And as a homeowner myself, who's owned and, and sold a lot of homes, when it comes to finishing a basement, it can become so frustrating when you want to lay out your living space in the basement and you have to go around a utility closet with your hot water heater and your furnace but in this basement Brandon you've spent a lot of time laying this out I see here that we've got two egress windows so you could literally add two more bedrooms and a bathroom and then you have all this huge living space completely available with no obstructions. Just absolutely, absolutely incredible, man. Thank you. Absolutely. So I was noticing uh, your ductwork and how clean your ductwork is. Can you tell me what you uh, how you've gone above and beyond with the ductwork? And again, talking about air infiltration. Yeah, so Jeremiah with Dynamic Heating and Cooling, uh, he's a buddy of mine, but he's also, he's, he's a detailed guy. He likes to get it right. Uh, the company, his manufacturer that he uses too, they took this entire system, um, designed it. We told them what we wanted to do, how we've kind of made this jog here in the ductwork, like you talked about getting everything over to one central location. Mm -hmm. They made sure our blower, everything that needs to happen has happened to get this nice clean run. We've made it to where we've just got one, whenever we finish the basement, one little soffit down the middle, uh -huh. that's it. But, JB, oh, they've taken the time, they've taped, all of our duct, all the way around, all the way down. And then any joints that are not tapable, they get a sealant that he uses, which is rated for ductwork, et cetera, to seal those joints up and things like that. Which is super important, that way you're not losing your conditioned air into dead ceiling space. 
for dead floor space. So that, yeah. yeah. It's super clean. Very And then our returns as well, so we're not sucking. I mean, ideally all the air inside is great, but we're not pulling air into the return that we're not wanting or out of dirty spaces or otherwise, or on conditions. Yeah, very impressive. Kind of thinking, so everybody that's looking at this is going, well, God, oh yeah, with unlimited budget, we can do that, right? Well, our mindset here is not to just spin, spin, spin. So the things that we've shown you and things that we've done, yeah, it's a little bit of labor, a little bit of material, but we're not talking in the grand scheme of this 1800 square foot house, we're not talking 50 grand, we're right. talking oh, in the grand scheme of 10,000 bucks maybe. Very affordable. So all those things, in five years time, it's already paid for itself. Absolutely. If this is forever, it's a no brainer. Absolutely, 100%. So. Again, um, I want to take the opportunity to thank Brandon. Uh, he's an amazing builder here in Gardner. Um, he really goes above and beyond in building not only just a quality home, but a highly energy efficient home, a very comfortable home to live in. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah. Appreciate your time. I tell you what, if you're in the, he also does custom remodels. So if you're ever, <laughs> ever in the uh, market for a new home or any kind of remodel, this is the guy. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brandon. Yeah. Again, thanks.